Today, I would like to cook with you not one, but two great recipes. The first one is something you've been asking for so long. It's the lavash, the thin bread that's easily bendable and you can use it like a spoon, you can use it as a wrap. Whatever you wrap or spoon with becomes amazing also because of the bread. And it's so easy to do, I made it so simple, you won't believe it and it's something you can do momentarily. Second one is my invention and if one day you come to Istanbul unannounced and say Refika I'm here or we meet on the doorway of the atelier 50% 60% probability that we are going to cook this dish together why it's really easy to prepare ingredients are easy to find and it's amazingly delicious and we can do it together in five to ten minutes this recipe consists of thin carpaccio like meat which is marinated in an amazing way and on top of it there's this melting cheese which together with the meat juices in the pan becomes amazing in five minutes. First, I would like to start with the meat. I want to marinate it so that the uh, meat gets even tastier. And to do that, I start with a teaspoon of colored pepper, but it could be black pepper. If you have thin black pepper, it's okay. And I'm going to use a mortar here. <coughs> what I do, I make a mixture of the black pepper. Actually, red one, green ones and white ones are different stages of black pepper, same pepper, and different kind of drying. Green and red ones are shock dry, the white ones are watered and dried and the outside, the wrinkly skin is taken off. But all together, when it's combined, it has like the red and green have more fruity tastes. The taste and the bitterness becomes very, very mind-blowing. I have four garlic cloves together with a bit of salt, teaspoon of salt, not heap. I have two sprigs of rosemary. These are like more full. If you have the store-bought ones, use three. What I do, I never cut the rosemary leaves. What I found out that if you cut it with a, a knife, the bitterness becomes higher. What I do, I take all the leaves like this. Some of it, I leave it on the side, so I'll use it as a topping. And now I beat this rosemary about 20 times. Now, I need a medium for it to be transferred, so that's the olive oil. So about six tablespoons of olive oil. Now, we have a great tasty mixture here, but for it to get into the meat as soon as possible and to make it, uh, to tenderize the meat, to make it softer, I need another medium and that's vinegar. And I have two tablespoons of white wine vinegar, but you can use any vinegar when white wine is a bit tastier. So, almost done, one final thing. I want a bit of hotness. Red peppers are like, kicks you and then pulls it back. What? Kicks you like this. <laughs> and then you get that <laughs> feeling and then everything's fine. So, I edit here. Uh, use one and a half. Uh, if you have a problem with the hotness, you can decrease. And I leave some on the side to put on top. The rest gets in. And the seeds goes to the bank to be planted. Now we have this incredibly tasting mixture. Here we have 400 grams of filet steak and this will be great for four people. I have taken this from the butcher as a whole and put this on the freezer before we started to shoot, like half an hour. Why? I want to cut it thinly and I don't want it to be like jiggling around. I have a sharp knife and I'll find this part is better, straight. So I would like to cut it like this. They can ask the butcher to slice it. Thinly, but it should be very thinly sliced. Usually butchers wouldn't want to do that. Now, we have all the pieces and some of them are thin, some of them are thicker because it's like the final part and it's not easy to cut. I normally don't like using any more plastic in the kitchen, but for this recipe I kind of need it. And I'm cutting one edge and also this part. Can't you do this with cooking paper? You could, but uh, because you beat it, the moist of the meat gets into the paper and 
after two, three uses, it's not well anymore. Mm -hmm. I put this one like this in the middle and like beat it like this. Not like this, but like sliding, hitting and sliding, hitting and sliding. So the first one comes. What we do, take a plate, add some of the mixture to the bottom, some of the olive oil, so that it won't stick. Put the meat in and add some sauce. Now, because there's the vinegar, the redness is going to brown a bit. It's so tasty, you can even eat it like this after half an hour. If you don't have this beating tool, what you can do, take a pan which is like heavy at the bottom and you can use it to hit it like this. Watch your hands for this one. It's not very easy to do, but it works. Until now, what we're trying to do is like carpaccio, but it's going to be different in a while. This mixture, you can use it in many things. It makes everything great. Now I have these small leftovers. Usually in TV shows, in most of the videos, you, you never get to see these leftovers, but in life, in real life, we all do get these. So I'm also going to use them. I have collected them all here and put this plastic again and hit them once too. Why do I have to use plastic? by the way like not just use it this directly because we're making it so thin if it's on the wood or on the metal it sticks and I don't want to lose its water as well so this is the best way so here you go we have great meat small like something like this becomes so big like this we have to make sure that both sides of each piece every meat gets its share from the sauce this will stay around, like say, 10 to 15 minutes until I make the bread, but we need a small break to make the bread. Now I'm going to use 250 grams of flour. In it, I'm going to put 125 milliliters of water to the middle. I'm not going to add it all together. Add the olive oil, two tablespoons and one teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to add water step by step. By doing this, what I did, normally the dough becomes really sticky in your hands, but this way it doesn't. Because you added slowly. Uh, I added slowly and I didn't put my hand until it gets into a certain amount of consistency. I've been kneading for about six minutes, seven minutes. First, it seems as if the flour wouldn't get inside, but it does, and when it cleans the surface like this, it means it is done. Now I'm making round patties. Normally, lavash, we call it lavash yufka, more in Turkish, is the ancestor of bread. Even before the sourdough, when the wheat was grinded and mixed with water, it's what's there. And in Anatolia, when I was small, from my father's village, my grandfather would send us, grandma would send us yufkas like this round things on top of each other. Because like once they make it and they make it as the whole village and put somewhere and you know, use it all year long. It doesn't go bad. It doesn't go, because you dry it. You put one on top of each other. It's still like a semi-dried lavash. You take it out, you put some water and it comes back to life and you use it. It's the spoon of Anatole. They would eat it that way. Like they would have this big sitting in the village tables and on the ground and there would be lavashes, the thin yufkas. And then let's say the pilaf would come. And then maybe if it's a, like a bayram or something, really just holiday or something, some meat, but watery meat, not like dried, like steaks, like kind of something with has a lot of garlic, onions and etc. So what you do, the yufka, the lavash at the bottom will be wet. Everyone from their side would pick up a piece, have some pita, have some meat and eat it that way. I have five patties like this. I'm going to let them sit for five minutes. At that time, what should we cook it with? Is going to be the cast iron, <laughs> which we make our kebabs and burgers and etc. But we're not going to use the inside, but we're going to use the bottom like this. Why? The cast iron gets really hot well, doesn't get cool very easily, and I can still arrange the fire. But you say, Rifka, I don't have cast iron, so I cannot make lavash. No. What we can do, two other options I have. One is my fancy enamelware pan. Instead of this, you can use this one, 
and use this surface. But the difference is the enamelware gets really hot fast and cools down fast. So adjusting the heat would be a little harder. Something which would be rather easier, but not as easy as the cast iron would be. Some stainless steel, which has a thick bottom. So you can use these as well. Anyways, I put it on the highest heat. Now, this is going to warm up and I'm going to make the patties. I put not so much, but a little bit of flour and I start to roll it. And because this is a hard dough, I need to push a little, but not too much. If I push it too much, it won't be as round. So slowly roll the pin on the dough and then flip it and rotate it 90 degrees. Now, after I open it for a while, what I'm going to do, like pizza, I want to expand it a little more. Whoop. It's very easy to do. You want to try? Put it on your hands and tilt it like this. And while you're doing this, have a bit of pull. <laughs> faster, you faster! Have to jump with it? Not but that. you're poking fingers too much. Now it's longer. So, can you feel it with your hands? This elongating it. Now do this from scratch. No, I have yes, to yes, 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 I yes, have yes, to yes, 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 yes first one. In French there's a saying that the first scrap would always burn, so the first one might not be so great. From what I see, I believe it's very hot now, so I turned it a bit less. Why? It suddenly browned before cooking the rest of the places. For example, these sides might not seem to you as if it's cooked, but Think about the tortillas that are sold. These are all just this color. It's already cooked and it's already well. So no worries. For the first time, people, it's really nice. So now do the round thing. It's going to make it rounder. And mine is also ready. Now, when it's all ready like this, guys, yeah. ow, uh, I'm going to put a bit of butter. We don't need to. Now, Bahar, you can go and... Ah, before you put it, sorry, sorry. Each time, we need a damp cloth to clean, because, you know, if there's a bit of flour, there will be blacknesses on. Now, you're so good, it, you don't have any flour, but... Yes. Once you put it, don't touch it. Touch it, it. okay. Until it leaves itself from the pan. But don't put butter when it's on there. The milk on the butter is going to burn on the stove. Turn it again. It's done. You don't need to butter it. If you don't want butter, you don't need to. Hmm. Well, we all love butter, I guess. <laughs> okay. This helps like an insulator to keep the moist a little longer. The most important part is to arrange the heat. And to arrange the heat, actually, I want to show you these two breads that I made yesterday. When the heat is not high, what it becomes, it doesn't become like this fluffy, but rather a hard bread, because until it cooks, it takes all this moist out and it becomes a cranky one like this. When it's too hot, these bubbles become black before the other places have time to mature. So those bubbles totally burn and become something like this. This is what happens when it's too hot. This is what happens when it's too cold. Now, here comes the fun part. On top of the meat, I need a melting cheese. And in Turkey, we have something called kolat. It's an extension of kashar kashkava. What it is, is it's young cheese, which can melt and elongate well. You can use mozzarella, different kind of cheeses that you can use that is good for the toasts and melting. You can use various kinds. What I want to show you is my little Refika technique for cutting thin, nice pieces of cheese. 200 grams of cheese is ready and here I have my pan. This episode became more about like actually understanding pans and this is a copper pan. The difference between the cast iron and the copper is actually it's directly its opposite. What it happens is it's one of the best conductors so the pan gets really hot very easily and really cold when you turn it down. That's what I want because the, my meat is very thin, it will cook very fast, but if it's like a cast iron or big thick bottom stainless steel, it's going to get cool in a long time, so my meat will be overcooked. So, enamelware, copper, if not aluminium could do. I turn on the heat, after now I have to be really fast. I put some olive oil, make sure that olive oil 
is distributed everywhere. I start to put my meat. As you can see, it's already browning because of the vinegar. So very fast, I'm putting all these. So if you come, we're gonna do this together. So I'm filling all these places, all the goodness is here. I don't want to lose any of it. After the first one, which is this one that you put, okay. you finish all putting all of them in. I turn the first one around. Some of them are really thin, so they're already cooked on even the other side as well. If you like medium, medium rare, you don't even have to turn the meat. And I'm putting all the cheese on top very fast. And do you remember the rosemaries and the red peppers? I add. And find a bit of black pepper, fresh. And the lid. Here it goes. How many minutes? One. Ah. It's probably done. I turn it off. Like if you have the guests, like don't open it. Don't have a look. Open it in front of them, in the middle of the table. The lavashes are here as well, if we're ready. Three, two, one, oh! And oh. it's sizzling like this. Here comes the lavash. Everyone does this. If you don't dip it, and if you don't get the water that the meat is inside the dish still. It is this thing. Wow. Oh, yeah. No words for this. Yeah. Is it your turn, my turn? Is it your turn? Because you'll get hot and yeah, yeah, burn yeah. your mouth, yeah. that's why, yeah? Okay, for you guys, I'm eating it. Every time, so good. You get the smell of the rosemary. Each taste opens one by one. Don't be ashamed when you do this, even though you don't do lavash, please clean the plate with some kind of bread or something. Take good care. Both of us love you so much. Also Murat, who does the editing. Here, a photo of Murat. We all love you guys very much. Thank you for supporting us. Please support us more by sharing this video and pressing like so that we can continue. Thank you for everything. Bye.